Got two cars in a race, northbound, no 24. Yeah, James, McDonough, you've got anybody north of you, that's Northern the trouble. Northern Uniforms, yeah, S21, Northern Uniforms, yeah. Northern Uniforms, yeah. Northern Uniforms, yeah. Northern Uniforms, yeah. Northern Uniforms, yeah.
Don't stop and we're on Jefferson Extension at Short Grace. Right on 34. 
Alright, if we can paint them on 34. Set up perimeter. 
Female, white Stay female, three and five year old guy. What we're hearing is like, as you said, a, a possibly a three-year-old and a five-year-old in the car with a white female. This is uh, coming out of Ellis County from what we're hearing, possible kidnap uh, situation. We've been following it for now about 10 minutes. She's reaching up to speeds of over 100 miles an hour. She's been driving on a, a lot on the shoulder. We're northbound at 75. Uh, just past, I'll try to get that road for you here. Approaching Forest Lane. Uh, we're approaching Forest Lane, actually. Approaching Forest Lane, we have several uh, PD units uh, in pursuit of this. We haven't heard of anything about stop sticks or anything else. There is some pretty heavy traffic here on, on 75, and, and as you can see, she's been driving on the, sh on the shoulder pretty much the whole time we've been watching her. So it's, it's kind of a precarious situation here. She's going really fast with a couple of, uh, allegedly a couple of young kids in the car with her. Well, we were hearing, Mike, from Lynn Kawano, from her contacts here, that she was saying they're considering backing off on this. I mean, listen, if you've got helicopters in the air, they're not going to lose sight of this woman. And you got to wonder, with a three-year-old and a five-year-old in this vehicle, they obviously must assume you know, that the kids were in danger in this possible kidnapping to start the, this chase in the first place. But to continue the chase at speeds, like you said, 100, 100 miles an hour, I mean, that is really putting those kids in danger, and other people on the road as well. Yes, absolutely. And, and it's kind of surprising that they're doing this, but they may, they may feel like there's some kind of dangerous situation that they need to follow at this speed. Um, 
as I said, she's driving on the shoulder here. Uh, she's been going in and out of traffic quite a bit, so it's it's um, it, obviously a very very dangerous situation. I don't know why she's running. I, I you know whether or not there's a custody situation or anything like that. We haven't heard that. We're working on that. But for now, if there is these two kids in this car. Uh, this is a, a pretty scary situation, and we'll just stay above it. There are no other police helicopters right now um, where we're at. Uh, we're just trying to uh, stay with the car here. They're going continuing under the bridge. It uh, looks like we're continuing northbound. Um, I'm, I'm listening to air traffic control, so I apologize for the <laughs> for the breakup in my audio here. She's ahead of you. Yeah, we know that these domestic situations, they are they can be the most dangerous of all, so obviously this police, county sheriff, and Where's she at? Where's she at? Ahead of you, ahead of you. Right stay there. Stay on this vehicle. I'm looking like at you. You're staying above uh, the scenes, keeping your eyes on that silver hot Honda. Just to recap for folks. We lost it. Where is it? In. We broke into programming. This chase started looking, in looking. Did we go too fast? We're not too fast. Uh, She's right ahead of us. Kidnapping. Ellis County. Okay, sheriff, you should be on her right there. It's perhaps a three-year-old, also a five-year-old in that vehicle being driven by a woman. So, gosh, for about 10, almost 15 minutes now, a high-speed chase speeds up to 100 miles an hour. Oh, she's exiting, exiting her. Yeah, you can see the kids there in the back seat. Boy, oh. this is just scary. This person driving erratically, driving on the shoulder. Mike Warner has been, been flying up above, and there are times that we're not going to be able to talk to Mike because he's got to listen to air traffic controllers and you know, other stuff going on up there in the sky. But he's going to keep this shot right on here on this, on this silver Honda. Again, a possible kidnapping. Coming up here on uh, Arapaho, coming up on Arapaho here, and she's still going. Uh, I think we got her right around 90 miles an hour still. Still going right around. Well, she's slowing down for traffic, so we're we're kind of fluctuating on the speed. Uh, still got uh, numerous police vehicles up, uh, actually in front of her and behind her. Uh, we just saw a county a, a police car just um, to the bottom of your screen there go zipping right by her. So they're they're trying to what they're trying to do is get up ahead and leave, uh, kind of relieve some of this traffic and uh, maybe make the situation a little less dangerous as she's weaving in and out. There's some heavy traffic here. You can see uh, an unmarked vehicle coming up behind her there. So they definitely have sights on her. Um, don't know what the plan is here. We're just going to kind of stay with it and see what she does. Well, it looks to be like they've got her boxed in. I think, Mike, too, the HOV lane, well, the HOV lane, I think that's where they have the, the poles up so you can't easily get over. All right, she's yeah, they do. They, over there to the, right. yeah, yeah, they got those, those little markers. Uh, right. But she seems to, uh, now we thought that she was going to exit here. It looks like she's right. coming up, uh, she's, I'm kind of, it's, I'm having to look out my window and see what she's doing as well as look at the monitor here to follow it. So it's kind of difficult. Oh, she skipped that exit. Um, we're still northbound on 75, and as you can see, she's still driving pretty erratically. Obviously, does not want to be caught here. But you know what? It's so frustrating, and it just angers me so much with those babies in the car. Whatever you did, pull over, stop, get the kids to safety, and then, you know what? Take care of those kids first, and then get down the road if you need to absolutely i mean you know this is one of those situations we just don't know what what has been has transpired to right. cause her to run like this so there could be uh, you know a custody situation who knows um hopefully that she'll realize that she's putting not only her life and her kids lives in danger but everybody else around her so we need to stop this chase but the police are uh, as i said ahead and behind her they're trying to get some of the traffic they're trying to clear the traffic ahead you see the county uh, uh, police officer uh, going ahead like that they're actually racing ahead to try to clear some of that traffic. As you can see, you know, it, it's pretty heavy here. And, and as they race ahead to try to get some of this traffic out of the way and make it a little less dangerous. But she's very, very erratic. You know, you can see she's switching lanes. A lot of times she w when there was a shoulder on the road, she was driving on the shoulder. We got her right now at about... Just past Campbell Road. She's just past Campbell Road, and she's going about 85, 90 miles an hour at this point. Hey, Mike, we've had a pretty close shot of this car for the majority of the time. Can you give us a number of how many... Uh, law enforcement officials are involved in this right now. I'm looking. I'm looking. I've I see. Uh, I'm counting about six or seven cop cars just by glancing out the window here. There, th it's kind of hard to tell. There's a lot of unmarked cars around, sure. and they're and they're in front of her and in back of her. So it's uh, they definitely have her followed. There is not another air unit up here yet. Uh, the the PD unit is not on scene, so we're actually the only air unit following this. Um, right. And you can see they're just kind of pacing her. They're, they don't look like they're trying to attempt any kind of stop maneuver. It looks like they're just trying to stay with her. And obviously they're they're radioing ahead and letting know you know which direction she's going. But again, you know, nothing they can do to to slow her down um, until she actually decides to stop. So we're just going to kind of stay above this and and see what she does here. 
All right, we're looking at the time now. We've got about 3.20. Traffic is only going to continue to Exiting get heavier. Exiting onto the tollway. So the person that's driver, the female driver, we're told, has been weaving in and out of traffic and gosh, driving so erratically. Oh, look at this. Oh, it looks oh, like whoa. they just about hit that car. All right. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, All right, we're here. going westbound on George Bush. Right, it looks like a... I'm sorry, we're going westbound. Looks like she's going uh, westbound, westbound on the uh, George Bush tollway. Westbound okay. on George Bush. And you can see she's passing erratically. Uh, obviously, she's very close to that car if she didn't hit it. Um, and, and it's just really, really uh, yeah. you know, not a good thing. You know, the different counties uh, in the city of Dallas, everybody's got different rules as to when to begin cases, when to continue with cases. And we heard from Lynn Colano earlier from, from her contacts in Dallas County that they were considering backing off on this case uh, because of those two kids in that car, that three-year-old and that five-year-old. But no, this this driver definitely um, did some damage to the car that, that he passed a, a, Exiting a on the frontage road. Yep, she exited on the frontage road there. And uh, as you were saying, uh, you know, um, Kind of backing off the chase. They may just trying to yeah. be, st uh, just trying to stay with her. Back on uh, 190. You know, not sure. really chasing her. It looks like she's going to get back on uh, 190 here and possibly go back. I don't know if she's getting back westbound on 190. And um, they may just be letting her go. You know, to to, to yeah. see where she's going. Uh, you know, the dip, like you said, the different counties and different cities have their chase policies are different, but how they can chase, mm -hmm. uh, depending on whether how dangerous it is. And we don't know again if if the, they feel that the kids' lives are in danger whether she's speeding or not in that car. So obviously there's something going on here where they feel they need to, to stay with this vehicle. All right, Mike, Lynn Colano has been on the phone. You've been making calls. Lynn, what's the latest you can bring us? What's going on? Yeah, Heather, I just got off the phone with the sergeant over at DPD's chopper unit. He said Air One is above assisting, but that Dallas police, they're not going to get into this chase on the ground, at least not right now. Earlier we heard Ellis County Sheriff talking about getting Dallas police involved when they were coming through the Mixmaster. It looked like they really wanted some assistance on this, but DPD has a very strict chase policy. They recently amended it and relaxed it just a little bit when other agencies are chasing in Dallas. But in this case, because there are kids in the car, Dallas police are just hanging back. They are allowing Air One to stay going? above this chase to assist from the air. But other than that, they're not going to get fast out on she? the ground. So they're just going to have to watch as this thing goes by. You can see, it seems to me, Heather, that in the last few minutes, the car has picked up speed as traffic has lightened a little bit as they came out of that high five area. So, but everyone is assisting from the air, and, and uh, as you can see, traffic really has thinned out a lot as he uh, moves further north, Heather. Yeah, but I wonder when, as the afternoon goes on, and we get, you know, more traffic from, from people getting off work. Of course. What do you know about Dallas County? Because I did see a Dallas County. Uh, Sarah. We've got to climb higher, Mike, for air one. What's the, the, what the policy yeah, there? Stay you know, with they it. have a much more relaxed How fast we go? policy as well. And I, I, I didn't actually see that car in there because from the air, a lot of these cars kind of look alike. Right. But I would imagine that Dallas County Sheriff would join in and assist in any way that they can. Well, we've seen a couple of unmarked vehicles. Well, we assume are unmarked vehicles. There's that big black SUV with the brush guard that's been staying pretty closely behind this silver Honda. And then, yeah, at one point, there was a Dallas County Sheriff vehicle that moves exactly beside, exactly beside the driver. Again, if you're just joining us, about 2.05, we were told this case began in Ellis County. Uh, there's a, a woman behind the wheel, and we were told that there are two children in this vehicle as well, a three-year-old and a five-year-old as well. Um, and Heather, you know, uh, one more thing. Yeah. With regard to having children in the car, that's really going to change the way they chase in right. any agency. Obviously, they're not going to do more dangerous maneuvers. They're not going to try to push this car off the road. They're not going to box this person in. If, if there are children, I, I imagine they're just going to keep following, hoping she either runs out of gas or just decides to give up. But when, uh, you know, if you've got Air One in the air assisting, you've got Mike Warner in the air, not that law enforcement's going to depend on Mike, even though he's doing a great job, but why, why wouldn't you all together? And just to let folks know, we're at Bush Turnpike and the tollway right now. But, but what, what's the thing? I mean, I know it's hard because we don't know all the details, but you've got kids in the car, you've got somebody driving 100 miles an hour. Absolutely. I think mostly they're going to be there if they back off a little bit in case this woman wrecks out to yeah. either to be responding and immediately stay with them, okay. to assist. And you can see, I think, it looks like to me, that they have backed off just a little bit. At least the law enforcement vehicles seem to be backing off a little bit, but of course the choppers are going to stay right there with that car. Yep. What's the option, Lynn, of trying to use... 
in something like this. That's exactly. one of those cases that every agency Where has do you exit? a different policy. But, you know, if, if they were going to use stop six, they would have done that by but now. But is this? He's okay, going with the northbound tollway. Northbound tollway. Northbound tollway. Exit ramps are good good uh, opportunities to use these stop He's right underneath us. I don't think they're going to yeah. use stop yeah, yeah, I know. Away from it. Good job. Car. It could, you know, cause her to lose control and spin out. And with those kids in the car, I think they're going to be extra careful about that. Hey, Mike, just, I just want to confirm, northbound on the tollway right now, the Dallas North tollway? Yeah, northbound on the tollway. She just made that turn from uh, 190 there. All right, can you look up ahead? Can you get an idea of what traffic's like right now? Yep, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to widen out the shot for you, and I'm looking at it. It's actually pretty thin. As, I, as I've been saying, they've been uh, sending Dallas County cops up ahead, and they've actually mm -hmm. been kind of clearing the way as much as possible. You know, So it's not... It doesn't look like a horrible, uh, you know, rush hour. It looks like it's pretty thin for for this time of day. Right. Uh, but she's um, obviously speeding back up. We've been up to over 100 miles an hour a couple of times while you guys were talking. She's back up to about 90 miles an hour right now. Obviously out there in the fast lane. It's got several PD units behind her and several in front, as as has been. And Air One is on scene down below us now. We've had to climb up a little higher to give room for Air One, but uh, they are the helicopter is on scene. Mike, has it looked like there's cars have pulled back a little bit, like the uh, police cars are maybe giving her a little bit more room and letting the choppers, now that Air One is, is there alongside, giving her a little bit more room? Uh, not, not really. She's had that unmarked county officer and that black SUV behind her. That's an unmarked county officer. She's had that pretty much on her tail the entire time. Um, you've seen a couple of Dallas, Dallas County cops come up alongside her and pace along with her, trying, uh, I imagine trying to signal her to, her to please pull over, but uh, she has refused to do so, but the cops had, do not seem to be backing off, at least from my vantage point here. You said that they were blocking off some of the um, entrance ramps. Are they still getting ahead of her and trying to do that, and how far ahead are they trying to do that? And there goes uh, one of the cal county officers now. Uh, they go about... A a quarter mile, maybe a half mile, a mile ahead of her to try to get it to block those exits to keep more cars from getting on the freeway. Looks like they're. It looks like that truck is slowing down. Yeah, they're boxing her. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like they're boxing her. I mean, uh, maybe it's a county truck. I'm not sure. And that's that black SUV is the unmarked uh, police that has been following her the whole time. There yeah, is another one. Yeah. Mike, take a look in front. I mean, there seemed to be a black pickup. That, see the pickup there? That pickup really seemed to kind of be slowing down. Right? Yeah, I don't think, I think well, that's a right. civilian it's vehicle. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and, and the cops always do, uh, advise, you know, if you're a civilian driver and you know this is coming your way, please do not try to get don't involved get in this. Involved. You know, get out of the way, let them do their job. Uh, yeah. She's obviously, again, back on the shoulder, and this is what she's been doing, either on the right or left shoulder. She's been, whatever means it takes to get away, and this is the trouble they've been having with her and those two kids in the car. It has looked like she slowed down quite a bit, Mike. It's even you can see the officer right now speeding up to catch up to her, uh, possibly talking to her, telling her to slow down, trying to see what's going on here. But it looked like for a while she was going really fast and then kind of slowed down. Is that because of traffic, you think? Yeah, it is because of traffic. It's because, uh, it, I, you know, I think that she's looking for ways out. She comes up to exits, and it looks to me like, and I'm just kind of speculating, but when she gets, see, you saw those cops that were blocking that entrance right there. Mm -hmm. When she looks, uh, she gets towards an exit like she's going to try to make a move or try to trick the police. At this point, with all the helicopters above her, there's no way out of this. She just there's, needs to pull yeah, over. Yeah. And she really just seemed like she floored it a little while ago and, and got quite a bit ahead of the vehicles following her. Yeah, she, it did, and um, she's speeding back up now. I, I can just tell by the way that the helicopter's flying that we're, uh, she's gone back up to about 90, 100 miles an hour here. You can tell as she's pulling away from the, the police. They typically don't drive that speed with her. Uh, they stay kind of lag behind a little bit. And approaching 121. Uh, approaching 121, and she's going pretty fast. She's going about 95 miles an hour, according to our, our airspeed up here. Uh, coming up to 121, and we'll see what and she like does. We talked about this earlier with the stop stick. Uh, you can see she's kind of running into some traffic issues right here. Uh, with the stop stick, you haven't seen any officers appear like they're going to throw stop sticks out at any point? Not at all. It doesn't. I don't think that the roads that she's driving on with the traffic, the amount of traffic that she, that's there, I, I would find it hard that they would be able to get stop sticks in front of her until they get the road completely cleared off. Because of all that other traffic, too dangerous to have a police officer stand out there in the middle of the highway. Um, so that's going to we be a problem. Yeah. We were talking about Dallas County. You got a Dallas County yep, there sheriff right there, right there behind. And let me let me kind of just interrupt for one second. Bring folks up to speed. If you're just now tuning in, this is a possible kidnapping that started in Ellis County shortly after two o'clock. Ellis County Sheriff jumped into this chase. There's a woman behind the wheel. We are told that there is a three-year-old and a five-year-old in the back seat 
of this vehicle. Again, it started about 2.05, so for just about 30 minutes now, it went up 45, uh, it's been on 75, and she's driven on the uh, Dallas North Hallway, and speeds up to 100 miles an hour. Lynn, Kawano, you and I were talking about the, the chase policies, and, you know, the, the discussion, it seems, among Ellis County Sheriff's to, uh, to possibly pull back because this woman is being covered from the sky. So you think about the safety of the, the other drivers on the road and, and, and then these children in the back seat. Yeah, they talked about that, that if at any point they felt that those right children were being put in danger, they are going to pull back. And with the choppers above, uh, uh, you know, I don't Chad, think what road are we at? Now, by calling uh, just that passed Warren. Just a good point. Uh, if she continues on the 121? Topic, isn't she going to run out of the We're on the tollway still here? approaching Lebanon road. road. She's going on Lebanon Road. I'm sorry, we were on the we were talking to air traffic. I'm sorry, we we're on the tollway approaching Lebanon, and I'm sorry, I didn't hear your question. Well, is the uh, tollway going to end here soon if she continues on this path? Um, no, she's got quite a bit. I'm looking. Um, as I'm, I'm looking, at it, it, she's got a long ways to go. She's got plenty of room to keep going. The traffic is getting lighter as the further north we go here, so that's a good thing. Maybe they can possibly use a stop stick or try a pit maneuver with her. Don't know if they'll do that with the kids in the car. But as no, we get up, just, go ahead. I know, I was just going to say, that, that's when it just gets so scary for those children in that vehicle. And, you know, Lynn, I, I know I brought this comment up to, to Mike as well. It's just so frustrating. It's like, whatever you did, you know, law enforcement, the legal system, it'll get figured out. But get those kids out of that vehicle. Absolutely. Uh, and just putting a lot of people in danger, not just all those people around her. Look at her. She's surrounded by, by cars right now. But the kids in the back and then the law enforcement following her as well. So uh, it does appear to me that... They are taking a different approach with this chase. Normally, with a chase that lasts this long, you'll see a lot of officers around her. They'll start surrounding her, and they really seem to have pulled back once the choppers got involved. And, and I imagine that's because of those children inside the car, Heather. Hey, Lynn, we're looking at temperatures right now of 101 degrees, and I want to let everybody know that this entire newsroom is watching this chase right now, and, and, and it's just so, so frightening for, for everybody, you know, knowing those kids are in that vehicle. But Dan Henry kind of brought up a good point. You've got temperatures at more than 100 degrees, speeds of up to 100 miles an hour, and it seems to be an older model vehicle. The wind, woman, I couldn't tell if she had her, her windows down earlier or not, but you, know, you talk about the possible engine overheating and how that vehicle's going to stand up to the temperatures that are out there. Yeah, you know, that fast. And I imagine that police are, are kind of just going to wait it out. Maybe she'll run out of gas or something like that because they don't seem to be taking an aggressive approach with her. Obviously, we've talked about this over and over again with those kids in the car. You've really got to kind of sit back and let this thing play out. You don't want to do anything to make her, you know, lose control and spin out or, or anything along those lines with those kids involved. It really changes the dynamic of how law enforcement uh, is going to approach this. Well, and Mike, tell us what you see because I tell you what, for the last 20 minutes, that black SUV has been almost... And it's a few car lengths behind that silver Honda. I don't see the black SUV. I know. Uh, he's he's still back there. He's let the county okay. the county car has the county car has gone in front of him. Uh, okay. He's he's laid back a lot. Right. What you don't see is I'm trying to widen out the shot a little bit. What you don't see is in front of the speeding car, is a the DPS helicopter is actually in front of her, really low level. I, I've mm -hmm. kind of never really seen him like that do that before. I I, I think they're just kind of. Uh, they're just pacing her to see what she's going to do. I don't think they're going to try to stop her, especially with the kids in the car. I think they're just going to just basically follow her, and when she stops, they'll get her. Um, she's not going to go anywhere. This is kind of all for naught, really. Uh, she just exited off this tollway. We're just going to see on, on the frontage road. We're just going to sit here and see what she does. She's got a right or left turn coming up, or she could stay straight, but there's traffic stopped at that light right in front of her. She should be coming yeah, up to it. Yeah, there's a traffic light coming yeah, up, it's, right? Yeah, it's right here. Parkway. It's right here. There's traffic in front of her, so this could be interesting. She's going to have to I go off. Hopefully it can end. Well, yep, off-road. She's running the light. She made the UE. Going the wrong way, it looks like. Yep, she's on the wrong side of the road, unless there's one of those. And there's a semi. Yep. She's okay. going southbound yep. now. Yep, she's going. She, she kind of did one of those under, under the freeway turnaround things there. And now she's going back southbound on the tollway. Same way we just came up. It looks like we're going to go right back down. Okay, and is traffic heavier? You uh, would mention that it thinned out as she was heading north, so I'm guessing she's going to run into a lot more traffic coming southbound. Right now, it, it's pretty much a clear, except for that construction equipment right there. It's, she's on the frontage road. She's on the frontage road. If she, if she gets back on the 121, then she's... There's really not a lot of traffic guys up here. Uh, this far north up here, uh, there's right. not a lot of traffic not on the tollway. So and there she goes. Let's go uh, southbound on the tollway. Yeah, the right oh, the did they make that turn with her, Mike? Because yep. she was going the wrong way for a while. They did. Um, she just went the wrong way kind of for about a couple hundred yards.
uh, when she went under that fr uh, that freeway overpass. But you can see there's a, at least a one county car and two unmarked behind her, and there's more. Uh, uh, Air Air One is up in front of her. The police uh, DPS helicopter is up in front of her as well. Twenty one. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, so Mike, and post seen a lot up of these somewhere. What do you think that, that police are, are thinking right now? Are they, are they again, just saying, you know, let's back off, let's stay on top of her? Because, yeah, you're not actually covered a lot of these together. What do you think is going on? Well, I think, um, I think obviously, uh, like you said, we've covered a lot of these, and I think what's going on is they're just letting her drive. I think if, the, yeah. if they felt like they could pull her over if she was by herself and there wasn't little kids in that car with her, I think they would have ended this already. But um, the fact that those kids are possibly in danger, they're just going to let her... Uh, we've got her in our sights, the media helicopters, the police helicopter. She's not going to get away. And probably at this point, they just don't want to have any harm come to those children or actually to the driver and uh, try to end this. They, they never want to end a chase in a wreck or, you know, have any kind of violent ending. That's the last thing in the world. So if we can end this peacefully, that's what they're probably going to do and just follow her for however long this takes. Absolutely, and like you said, you covered a lot of these. By now, you would have seen a lot of officers with stop sticks at some point before she even got onto the tollway, and we haven't seen any of that, any indication of that, and, and really, it looks like everybody's kind of backed off. So I think, I, I think yeah, they, they decided that, you know, she's probably going to run out of gas or she's going to have car trouble, but they don't want to be uh, the cause of her losing control, especially since it, it's a lot of open road now. There's just not a lot of traffic out there. There's not a lot of traffic, but she will come back down into that traffic, because she's still going a pretty good clip and they still have they're still intent on following her uh, you know one of the problems with using stop sticks is the loss of control when your tires blow so I think uh, and the same with the pit maneuver when they try to use their cars to, to turn the, to spin the car around I think uh, with with children in the car innocent people in that car with her they're probably reluctant to use any of those maneuvers for fear that the car she'll lose control and cause an accident so uh, like you guys have been saying we'll just probably be following her for however long this is going to take here hopefully she'll run out of gas soon Hope she runs yeah, before we do. Ideal, that would be the ideal uh, scenario. Yes, yeah, so we, we, were, we were hoping she runs out of gas before we do. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. No, stay as long as you can, Mike. All right, it started about 3.05 uh, in Ellis County. This trade started as a possible kidnapping, so you know, Lynn, we might immediately, I guess, go to a possible domestic situation, which we all know can be the most dangerous and volatile situation uh, for the people in that particular family and for law enforcement as well. Uh, Every county, every city, they have their own rules and regulations of what they're going to do uh, to start a chase, to join a chase when that chase crosses county or, or city lines. So we do know that Dallas County sheriffs were involved. Uh, you said, Lynn, that Air One from DTB is assisting, but that Dallas right now they're going to you know, hold off uh, on getting involved. But Dallas County and Ellis County sheriffs uh, have been involved in this chase for a good 30 minutes now, more than 30 minutes. We did see her at uh, one of the turns that this driver, a woman, uh, clipped another car so she's not thrown the uh, passenger side mirror off in this chase. But boy, going speed is about to 100 miles an hour. And I just think about being in that car with those children. They must be just scared to death. Yeah. Yeah. That's, there's got to be a, a, you know, whatever. We don't know what's going on in that car. We've been kind of speculating about what happened here. But it's got to be a really horrifying for those kids. And, uh, and the police know that. And they, you know, I'm sure of doing everything they can to try to contact this person to get her to stop safely. When, uh, when the chase went into the mixed master, obviously a uh, high traffic area, they called for DPD to assist, and I think that's when Air One really got the call to come up and assist, because Dallas, as we talked about, has a very different, very strict chase policy, so they're not going to get involved, especially in a call where there's, there's kids and, and it's a situation like this, they're just not going to get involved. So Dallas County Sheriff kind of seemed to take the point when we first got on the air with this, we saw uh, the unmarked SUV really pacing her and following her and getting up alongside, probably yelling at her, telling her to stop. And then that car backed off when the sheriff's deputy's car took the lead. Is that still the case? And is that the car that's following? And are those unmarked cars still able to keep up, buildings. right? They are still, uh, the unmarked cars are still there. Everybody's still in place. Uh, you know, I think they're just kind of taking a posture of staying back. We're up at, we're up here at, at the interchange. We're just past south of the uh, uh, 121. 121, and we're going southbound now. We're on 121 southbound. We're on the totally and we southbound. Did see, just past uh, 121. Earlier, a lot of uh, squad cars getting in front of the chase to try to block up the entrance route. Is are they still doing that? Because I don't see a lot of cars now getting past her and, and making those kinds of uh, maneuvers like they were earlier. Ooh. Oh, oh, she's wow. she's going okay. Now she's. 
Hey. Zone. Yes, and, and as far as, as the cars getting in front of her, that was when she was going northbound. Now she's flipped around, and I imagine some of the police cars are going to stay in the areas they were. They don't just keep hopscotching in hey, front of her. This you is know. when I want the police cars just in front of her and hit the brakes. Yeah, have so the traffic she stopped. So that she can't go anywhere else. Yeah, the, 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 right. the police... Yeah, I don't I, want that white SUV to stop. I know that's yeah. somebody... Yeah, police have roads blocked oh, off. Pol they're hoping to police do have the road blocked off up here, guys. So this is going to end real soon. They've this got they've okay. got guns drawn. Look at them right here. Look at them. Look at them. Stop sticks. Stop, stop sticks. Uh, the stop sticks did get the tires. Whether or not they work is going to uh, going to be remain to be seen here. So we'll just have to watch. And uh, like we talked about, those stop sticks at those high speeds really dangerous. She could lose control. But perhaps because she was going so slow and and very dangerous for that deputy to be right there in the middle of the freeway like that. Uh, but going that slow, I guess they thought maybe that it, it would be a, a good option at this point. Yeah, I believe so. And, you know, that's the nature of those stop sticks. There's never a time when it's not ridiculously dangerous for the police officer. Okay, we're gonna get a uh, we don't know if, if that does actually worked or not. It looks like she's gonna. Can you see it all? I mean, uh, you know, uh, look at the, we've had to come up. Really see the tire. Yeah, we've had to come up quite a Spring bit. Uh, we had to come up quite a bit in altitude to stay out of Air One's way. So I can't really zoom in anymore on that tire, but it, I can't tell from where we are if it's flat or not. But it looked like the stop sticks. It looked like she ran over them. And, uh, okay, and I see the sheriff's deputy still behind Oh, she's her, pulling over. She's pulling over. Looks like she's yeah, stopped. she's slowed down. She's stopped. This could be the end of this. Let's see what she's got. It, they made That step six might have done the job because it looks to me like her front end is a little lower. Oh, they got their right guns drawn. Front. They yeah. have their guns drawn. She's moving forward. She's not stopped. Oh, this is what they call a felony stop where their guns drawn. She's still... Wait. Okay, they got she's the... not put the car in park yet. Uh, a lot of times, what you, we All typically right, see, go. okay. Hands up. Okay, we got the children. The children are out. One of the children were out of the car. Uh, they they have her in custody, so this is ended. And you saw the officer motion to 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 uh, slow it down a little bit. No, we saw one one child in the car, Micah. I can't see the other one. Have you? No, just one child. The officer's holding one child. Um, um, don't. Looks like there may be another one in there in the back seat. Does that tell us like a three-year-old to me? Uh, it's, it's kind of far away from me, but we were, we were told maybe a, a three and a five-year-old, and, and yep. the child does look to be maybe about three years old. Yeah, that's what we were he hearing as well. We're going to try to, yeah, there's the two kids. Oh, there's a little three-year-old that yeah. was in the back seat. Hey, just to let folks know where this is, this is uh, the tollway uh, northbound. Uh, north Can we get lower, Chad? Uh, no, we're low to go if they're one right below us. There's like two, two little girls. Yep. Uh, three and, and five-year-old children. You got mom and shorts and a cast of some sort on her. Yeah, she seems to be having a hard time walking. I don't know if she's wearing a cast or can we she seems to have a hard time driving. Watch your mic. She's up to 100 miles an hour. She's um, uh, we're okay. We're okay. We're not be looking at the back of it. We're good. Well, this is the ideal situation, the ideal ending for this, Mike. I know you've seen many of these, and a lot of times they end up in a crash, certainly with those two kids in the back seat. This is probably the best scenario that police were hoping for. The stop stick seemed to have helped. That seemed to have done the trick. The stop stick seemed to have slowed her down enough where she decided to pull over there on that on this road. Where are we at? Where are we at, Chad? Spring Creek Road, just on the west side of the tollway. It started in uh, Ellis County. It's the speeds up to 100 miles an hour. We were told by Ellis County Sheriff that there were two children in the back of this vehicle. Dallas County Sheriff, they joined us as well. Uh, it was ended thanks to stop six. Um, we were told that the ages of these children are are three and, and five. I guess it's over to around to the other side if we can. Between this, this woman and these two Chad, kids, but what? Can, can we order over, over, over to around to the other side? Okay. Police, perhaps after what they've been through, I'm just thinking if it was my kids, they'd be reaching out for mom and trying to get me, and there didn't seem to be a lot of communication from what we could see between the woman and the children, but again, that, that relationship will come out as we, we find out more from police. Uh, Mike, we appreciate you being up above the scene. The woman in custody now, in handcuffs, so it came to an end, and there seemed to be only that, that one vehicle that was clipped in this. Yep, it didn't, uh, yep, didn't seem like too much damage, and the way she was driving, that's a miracle. This is on Spring Creek Road. Uh, Spring Creek Boulevard is where this ended, just, just to the east of the tollway here. And like you, you, we talked about this, you know, the felony stop, certainly with those kids, they didn't come in the way they normally come in. We've seen lots of these cases and where 
the police run up, the driver is ripped out of the seat and, and thrown down, and, and obviously because of this situation with those kids involved, they seem to be taking this a lot more gingerly. Obviously, uh, you know, they were trying to be safe and protect themselves, but they seem to, to be a little bit more, uh, I guess, subdued in their approach to the vehicle. Yeah, absolutely, and if you guys remember, we had a chase about two weeks ago with a motorcycle, and at the end of that chase, the, the police pounced on the guy on, on the motorcycle and, and pummeled him on the ground there. We didn't see that at all here, and I I'm, I'm suspect that that's because their children were in the car with the mom. All right, so we invite you to, to, of course, stay with us right here on Fox 4 as we begin our coverage, more coverage on this tonight on Fox 4 News, beginning at 5 o'clock, and always on our website, you can head there, myfoxdfw.com, and of course, we're going to be posting more information on, on Facebook as we follow this story, but it appears that we've got this woman in custody, don't know the relationship between she and those two children, it appears to be two girls, uh, possibly so three and five years old, but we'll have more details here's on fine. Fox 4 News at Take 5, it. and again, always right here. on our website, okay. myfoxdfw.com, I'm Heather Hayes, here with Lynn Kawano and Mike Warner, up in the air, we'll see you shortly.